Today's video is brought to you by ablmerch.com. We've got hats, t-shirts, stickers, mugs, and more, including this USA Special Edition hats, all available through the link in the description box below. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Stephen A. Smith of ESPN getting into some hot water for his comments about Shohei Otani. Now, if you don't know who that is, I'll back up a little bit to explain. Now, Shohei Otani is a Japanese-born baseball player over here in the States. He's probably most comparable to Babe Ruth, meaning he can pitch very well, a very low ERA, and he can hit very well. Something like 33 home runs. We've not seen this kind of talent, this two-way talent, in a very long time. What Stephen A. Smith said was that Shohei Otani is not really good for the game because... He needs an interpreter when he does any kind of interviews. He can't really speak English. Now, I understand what he was trying to say, but ultimately, he's dead wrong. Now, before I go any further, let's roll the clip. In this clip, you'll see and hear Stephen A. Smith say what he said about Otani in full context. After we get done watching that, I'll come back. I'll talk about what he said there. Then I'll give you my two cents, my deep detail analysis, and then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Even though baseball is an international sport, and I totally get that, it's played in the United States and Canada. That's where Major League Baseball is being played. So when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it from this perspective. In the United States of America, when you talk about the sport of Major League Baseball, you talk about its lack of diversity in terms of African-American players. You talk about the influx of foreign players, whether they be from Venezuela, the Dominican Republic, or, or Japan, or anywhere else. If you are a star and you, are, you need an interpreter, that might have something to do, not everything, because there's a lot of things that go into it, but that might have something to do with your inability to ingratiate yourself with that young demographic to attract them to the sport. I would remind you, Max, I would remind my brother Jeff, I would remind others that baseball is in trouble. The audience for Major League Baseball, the demographic repeat, repeatedly gets older. It's not getting younger. That younger demographic, which is the targets for all of the advertisers and sponsors and everybody else out there, that's the NBA and the NFL. This brother is special. Make no mistake about it. But the fact that you got a foreign player that doesn't speak English, that needs an interpreter, believe it or not, I think contributes to harming the game to some degree when that's your box office appeal. It needs to be somebody like Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, those guys. And unfortunately, at this moment in time, that's not the case. All right, so you saw that, you heard that. Now, <laughs> there, there's a lot to quote-unquote unpack here, as a cool kid say. First things first, the elephant in the room for me is this whole thing about diversity. You want to try to attack Major League Sports for a lack of diversity? Really? Is that what we're going to do? I never heard Stephen A. Smith say anything about how uh, the National Basketball Association, the NBA, is not really diverse. 80% black, mostly American, African Americans. So where is the diversity in that? You got a handful of American white guys, some Europeans, and maybe some foreign-born black guys like Giannis and Patty Mills, guys like that. But for the most part, it's probably 80, 90% African-American. Are you going to cry about diversity in that? So why would you do it for Major League Baseball? And then you're talking about a lack of diversity when it comes to African-Americans, but you ignore the diversity. And Shohei Otani, who is Japanese and plays in the USA as one of the best players in the game, right? It's weird. And then you also ignore, you're talking about African-Americans. Well, I mean, do the Dominicans not count as, as African descendant? Or, but you got to have African-Americans specifically, not the guys from Cuba, Dominican, Puerto Rico, stuff like that. Okay, so they're, they're different kind of black folks. Like Yasiel Puig looks just like me, right? But because he's from Cuba, that don't really count. Okay, since they got dropped off first, they don't really count. But I digress. I think Stephen A. Smith has an ulterior motive, and that is clouding his better judgment. I've not really watched ESPN in a while, but I watch it occasionally because I do enjoy sports. You know, I like my, my favorite sport is basketball. 
I'm not really a baseball guy, to be honest, and I'm not really a football guy. I was a football guy back in the day when it wasn't so much political stuff involved and it wasn't soft kind of the way it's going now. But I'm a basketball guy, so I watch ESPN occasionally, and I know from a little bit that I do watch and from history that Stephen A. Smith is probably the best talent on the entire network. He's probably carrying a network on his back single-handedly. However, he has some really woke takes, and this is one of them. The issue with Major League Baseball is that it's becoming outdated. Now, if you enjoy baseball out there, you think it's not outdated, you like going to the games, hey, bravo. I've been to a few baseball games, and it's cool, but it's becoming outdated for the majority of Americans especially. And Japan is different, and Dominican Caribbean is different, but in America, it's becoming outdated because – um, people have very short attention spans and baseball is a long game and there's a lot of games. Well, like 180 games, something like that compared to football, with only 16 regular season games. Um, the NBA with 82 or 84 regular season games, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of games. The games are long. It's a lot of standing around, um, spitting out tobacco, chewing big leak gum, it's a lot of that going on. And then you got to try to find the highlights and the fun moments in that part. Baseball started as the great American pastime, right? You just go there, hang out, eating Cracker Jacks. It's just, a, it's just something to do, but it wasn't really necessarily that exciting from the very beginning. There is excitement there, but it's not to the level of uh, the NBA. Not at all. It's just not that way. You got the web gyms and stuff like that, but that happens kind of rarely. So the problem is kids are not going to play baseball because it's not really exciting and everybody wants to play basketball and football, especially talking about African-Americans specifically. Oh, yeah, everybody want to play basketball and football. Some black kids are playing baseball, but that's usually when they have their dads in the house. But that's a whole different ball of whack, so I digress. Nobody's really playing baseball when you're talking about African-Americans. They are playing baseball when you're talking about the Dominicans. They got all the major league baseball teams with a camp down in the Dominican Republic. Okay. And they would have a camp in Cuba if they could as well. They got quite a few Cubans, a lot of Venezuelans. And once you go to triple A ball, it's full of Dominicans and Cubans and everything else. But I digress. The whole point is that Americans are not really in tune with the game as much as they were before. And the, and the demographic is getting older because the younger kids are gravitating more towards basketball and football. That's just a reality. Now, as far as Shohei Otani, I mean, I don't think that his inability to speak English very well is really going to be a big hindrance because going back to the Dominican guys, a lot of these guys do not speak very good English. Okay, yeah, David Ortiz, uh, Manny Ramirez. I mean, they spoke English, but it wasn't necessarily that great. But it still added a whole lot to the game. And it's a lot of guys just like that all over the league. When you're talking about the NBA, a lot of these guys aren't necessarily the greatest English speakers. Giannis. He wasn't the best English speaker when he first came in the league and is now like Shaq, basically the same level as Shaq was. That's what Giannis is. And you got a lot of these European guys that aren't necessarily the greatest English speakers either. Now, as far as the interpreter, that's going to be an issue. I've never seen, I can't say I've seen an NBA player not be able to speak any kind of English at all. And he's an interpreter right there on the court. I can't say I've seen that before. You know, that's, that's something else. That's something a little different. But that's not really the cause of what's going on. Now, Stephen A. did apologize. And if I could find the apology, maybe I'll put it on the screen or in the box. But the, the apology was funny because he was like, well, I should know better and all this and that. And I'm black and I know what it's like. It's like, OK, you had to put that in there. Again, I think Stephen A. is caught up in this whole ESPN toxic woke environment. And the toxic woke environment always turns against itself. It always does. Because you engage all this racial stuff, all this identity politics stuff, you engage in that every single day just by working. Because you out there talking about Black Lives Matter on the air, they probably encourage you to do it. I wouldn't be surprised if one day on ESPN, they can to work with BLM shirts on under their suit and had their their blazer jacket exposed so you could see the BLM logo and everything else. If they did that, I'm not saying they did, but if they did it, I would not be surprised because that's how woke they are. However, when you engage in certain kinds of identity politics that may offend people like the Asian community, now you got to apologize. When you may offend the LGBT, LMNOP, 
Now you got to apologize. But you're always going to do that because of the environment. The environment kind of encourages it. But when you do it and somebody's offended that you didn't want to offend, now you got to apologize. But if you do it and someone is offended that you don't really care about, like let's say Stephen A would say something about whites, like something that was kind of racist toward whites, right? He could do that and get away with it because they're not really a protected group. But say something about Asians, now we got a problem. Say something about black men, it's not really an issue necessarily because you're a black male and black males aren't necessarily a protected group unless they're, they die or something like that and then they use that as some kind of weapon against whatever kind of political establishment may exist. It's a weird bunch of little rules you got to abide by when you engage in woke culture. So the solution for me is don't engage in the woke culture. Sports, as I close, sports is one of the last meritocracies that exists, right? Either you are a good player or you're not a good player. That's pretty much how it goes. And Shohei Otani is most certainly a great player. One of the best players, if not the best player in the entirety of Major League Baseball. That's a fact. That's what really matters the most. And like I said, if you want more kids, uh, more black kids, African-Americans to be involved with the game, well, um, trying to attack this guy is not going to do it. Maybe get more dads in the crib, taking the kids down to baseball games, maybe make the game more exciting. But at the same time, it's like if you change the game, then you may lose some of your loyal base. It's a weird place to be in. Maybe Major League Baseball should accept that they're not going to be anywhere near um, the NFL, which nothing is, not even basketball. Maybe accept your place as number three behind NFL, NBA, MLB. And I think MLB is still kind of in front of Major League Soccer. So accept your place and do what you do very well rather than trying to reform and attract new people while you turn off your existing base. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about what Stephen A. Smith said about Shohei Otani? Was he correct, incorrect? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys pretty much know where I'm at. I think uh, what Stephen A. said about the whole uh, interpreter thing, it's, it's a point, I guess, but that's not actually the problem with Major League Baseball. That's not, even if Shohei Otani spoke perfect English, Spanish, French, Japanese, Portuguese, whatever, that's not going to change the problem with baseball in general. Not really being that entertaining all the time. Being way too long, it's too many games. They need to accept their spot as number three behind the NFL and NBA and just have that be that. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.